Okay. There it goes. It's doing its own thing. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is not gonna work because it's gonna send me into my Christmas trees. What the heck are you doing, tractor? You don't know what you're doing. Previously on the WT Farm Girl channel, I set to work installing an auto sear system on our New Holland T5 tractor. Now while the tractor is not set up to be able to handle an auto steer system, we found a way to make it work. But the question is, will it actually work? And will it work well enough for what we need on our small fields? Today, I'm gonna walk you through setting up the system and getting RTK or N-Trip installed on your auto steering computer. A lot of guys have a lot of trouble with this, so hopefully this will help some of you guys out. And then finally, we're gonna do some field tasks to make sure it actually does what it says it can do. Let's go. Safety warning. Oh, it's touch screen. I see. Hello. English, okay. Um, failed to get registered address. <sighs> okay. Okay, so step one, when you turn it on, you're gonna get this screen, right? So you have to connect it to your home Wi-Fi. Um, you can either do Wi-Fi through your phone or you can do Wi-Fi through your home. But you're gonna click this right here and then that's gonna take you to all the settings like you would have on your phone. And you click, um, I'll go back here. So this is what it looks like. You click the network and internet. You log in your password for your network. And then we come back to this and it brings us back to here. So then you're gonna go through and click this register immediately after you've connected to your network. And then you go through and you set up an account through this system. You don't have to go to their website. Uh, you go through a series of questions, set that all up. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna log it in and hopefully it'll remember everything. Oh, there it is. Wow, that's kind of cool. All right. So one of the areas people struggle the most with with setting up the system is connecting to the satellites. You pretty much have two options. You can use the WAAS system, which will allow you to connect directly to the satellites. The problem with this system is it's not as highly accurate as the RTK system. So if accuracy really makes a difference in your setup, you're gonna want to use the RTK. So with RTK, the only downfall is that it requires a paid connection. So you either have to have a direct internet connection using either your, your cell phone Wi-Fi putting out a hotspot signal, or you can purchase a SIM card that installs into the monitor directly. The other option you have is using a mobile base station for your RTK. The advantage of the, of the mobile base station is that you don't have to pay a monthly fee. It's one and done. The other advantage of the mobile station is if you're in an area with low cell phone coverage, you don't have to worry because it will still be able to connect to the satellites. If you're in an area with excellent cell phone coverage, then perhaps using the SIM card or your own personal cell phone will work just as fine. Okay, so it's at least trying to find something. So those are the different options. It defaults to WAAS. Okay, so the only thing you're going to want to do is check your vehicle information right here. And this is what they're going to estimate. They're going to give you an estimate for your tractor. So I'd recommend getting a tape measure or a yardstick or meter stick if they make such a thing because everything's in meters so if you have a meter stick well might make it easier for you. So it's going to be a little quirky but you're going to click on the number over here and give it just a second like right here. And in case you don't know what the front wheel track is it'll show you a picture of where to measure from the inside there to the inside there. So that's really handy. I do like that. Um, so now we're going to click the number again and it should pop up. Like I said, it's kind of quirky. Come on. So we, it popped up front to rear wheel, wheelbase. Um, you type in there, uh, it'll pop up a little box for numbers and you can see right here, that's what the wheelbase is supposed to be. Click here. Oh 
Okay, so we got that done. Now, um, so this is another key area you wanna look at working with alerts. I'm not gonna worry about this now, but um, if you're having issues with stuff, we have spacing, we have speed alerts, off range, offset range alert. So definitely know that that's up there for options. All right, one of the biggest pains in the butt is restarting the system after every change because this is gonna take a while to link in. So if you don't have a base station and you don't have anything fancy and you don't have a, a, a SIM card, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into settings and then we have uh, crud chain signal source. Come on. And so we're gonna use SBAS and it defaults to WAAS. And for the most part, that seems to work. Now the difference between this and this is that this one's gonna be more advanced, this one's gonna have a lot more accuracy than this one. But the system should already come set up and ready to go with this. So, let's go on to that. <clears throat> For the angle sensor, we're gonna come over to perimeter settings, and then we're gonna click angle sensor calibration, and we're gonna click no angle sensor, which is in the drop down menu. So the angle sensor is a little bit different. You're gonna select no angle sensor as your option. And then in the top box, you're gonna type 16. In the bottom box, you're gonna type 50. And then you're gonna click okay for both of those. Do not click the detect the transmission ratio. Don't click that, that'll mess everything up. So after you click OK for the first two boxes, then you can go back and calibrate your tractor next. You have to do this step first before you calibrate your tractor. So technically now we should be able to plot out our first, um, go away. First one, let's see, is it vehicle information? I think it was still perimeter settings, vehicle calibration. Okay, we're in vehicle calibration, we're gonna go to start calibration. Click start. All right, so we are already set up in point A. You wanna make sure you have 50 meters and it will tell you how many meters you have right there as you're driving. People often wonder what the advantage of using an auto steer system is if you're not a row crop farmer. Right here we have a very good example. This is me spreading fertilizer on my hay fields. If you look very closely, you'll see the rows are not exactly straight. And it's a little difficult for me to calculate where I'm at, at certain points of the field. Now while you might consider some of the lines to be fairly close and accurate, others simply are not. And it's anyone's guess, especially when you're driving on the field, how close you actually are to the other line. The problem is you could end up over fertilizing or of course under fertilizing. And then you can also make more trips around the field, which leads to ground compaction. So if fertilizing, which isn't the end of the world, can be messed up a little bit, think about seeding. If I go through and overseed my hay fields, which is a big deal, I definitely don't want to waste seed in areas that have already been done, nor do I want to um, miss areas that really need it. Now this grass is really tall, so it's a lot easier to see my tracks. But when the grass has been cut, it's almost impossible to see where you've already driven. Fortunately, I didn't do too bad of a job, but you can see where it was a little bit wonky. So we're gonna go ahead and say confirm. This is gonna be point A. This is me just driving along. I forget how fast it says you're supposed to go, but not super fast. And this is what I mean by watching out for cords with dogs. 50, 51, 52, 54, 55. All right, so we're gonna stop right here. Confirm point B. Okay, we're not done. So now, we have to turn the vehicle around to point B with a vehicle head facing point A. Then tap start so that it travels to point A along the guidance line you've created in auto steering mode. Oh, see so we're coming along to the line. Start with so the vehicle. Oh, 
Okay, there it goes. It's doing its own thing. Oh my gosh. What the heck are you doing, tractor? You don't know what you're doing. So here's a great example of what happens when you don't set up your settings correctly. Little did I know at the time, I had my turning rad radius set to 16 instead of 4, and that's a huge difference. The other thing I had an issue with is I didn't set the GNS, you know, the satellite on top of the roof. I didn't have the location for that set up correctly either, so that also played a role. And lastly, I made the big mistake of clicking calibrate angle sensor instead of not clicking it. So as I mentioned before, do not click that because the combination of all three of those things will cause this to happen. So if you're having issues driving in a straight line, go back and recheck your settings and remeasure because chances are pretty good your measurements are off. Well, what we did was under vehicle calibration right here, um, <laughs> I think it changed it again. Huh. We changed this number right here, the pitch angle offset to zero and the roll angle offset to zero. And then we clicked confirm manual modification. But it's interesting that it changed it again. So, And once we inputted the correct settings that I already gave you, then this is what you'll end up with. All right, so far it's holding the line. No hands. So it's traveling, I think, to the point. Yep, see? Right over the center. That was perfect. Another very important thing worth noting is that you absolutely need an internet connection to use RTK. While the actual end trip can be free in certain areas, um, other areas charge a subscription, you have to use an internet connection. So whether that's Wi-Fi from your phone or a SIM card or an RTK base station, such as what um, is sold along with this auto steering system, you do need some way to connect to the internet. And we'll discuss the pros and cons of RTK versus WAAS in just a little bit. Now here in Michigan, we are actually pretty lucky. MDOT, the Michigan Department of Transportation, actually offers it for free. So we signed up for an account and we're gonna see if we can actually get this logged in here. Now I talked to a farmer friend of mine and he has not even done this before. So what we're doing is pretty significant if we can pull it off. But supposedly you can log in and that will give you free our trip. So let's give this a shot. All right, I think I picked one up. Oh, oh, ah, I got it. I got it connected. Look it, I got it. All right. So this is what I downloaded. This is from the Michigan MDOT. Um, so as far as the host, you have to put an IP address in. And for if you're in the Michigan area, let me see. Um, shoot, where'd it go? I just saw it. Okay, right there. So that's the IP address right there. I mean, at least as of 2023. So you use that IP address and then because I am close to Grand Rapids, I don't know if this would work for everybody, um, but it's suggested 
to use ports 1001 through 10006. So I tried 10001 and uh, after I put the port in, I clicked uh, get source or get node and then I made sure my account information, my username and my password was in there and it went through. It worked. So, wow. maybe now, maybe now we can actually get this rolling. And I've actually gotten further than some of my friends have gotten because they have not managed to pull this off. So, oh, and apparently my dog wants to get squished. Heidi, you gotta move your head, you're on my clutch. So, I will do my best to include information in the video description in case you need to try it. And if you're not in Michigan, um, I did find a website that may be able to help you. I don't know, but it'll give you a good starting ground. Also, if you happen to have your system showing you driving backwards instead of forwards, which means instead of a line coming out behind you, the line's coming out, well, in front of you. You need to restart your system and it should straighten itself out. Also check your GNS receiver on your roof to make sure it's facing the correct direction. Alright, so now we're going to input a boundary. We're going to have it set the boundary for the center, um, just because this is a demo. Uh, we're going to click confirm and see right now we're going to drive and then it should be tracing the boundary for us. Hopefully we'll be going straight. That's my goal. Okay, I had to restart it and it put it back the right direction, so that's good. All right, so now we are redrawing our boundary line. It really will not let you drive without a boundary line, so I guess that's probably a good thing. So the red line is gonna be your boundary line, and then I think the blue line that it draws is your working line. So let's click continue. All right, so now we're just past our starting point. So, oh, oh, oh my goodness gracious, okay. So it is trying to turn us. We have a hill here, so that makes me really nervous that it's uh, doing this on its own. So this is like the really sketchy area because we have some obstacles that we have to go around. And I just really wanna see if it can take the turn. Um, obviously a lot of this right now is just um, getting used to the controls and what they do. Reading through the manual, you know, manuals can be confusing. Actually, I'm off to the side quite a lot. I don't know why it's running me off so far. Um, you can see my tire tracks. As long as it doesn't run us off a lot when we come up around this turn because it's it's really tight. So so far, uh oh, are we gonna turn? Are we gonna turn? Are we gonna hit the fence? What are we doing here? See, it's pulling it out wide. It's tracing its own lines beyond what I had traced. See how it has me working on the outside edge? It really shouldn't be doing that, but um, that's just stuff that I have to fine tune on my own. All right, so here's the big one right here. Can we fit between this? What are you gonna do, tractor? What are you gonna do? Where are you going? Oh, are we gonna hit the hay baler? All right, so far so good. We're not uh, not gonna hit the hay baler. Oh, we're getting a little close. Like I said, this is a really tight technical spot. So it came a little bit close, but I mean, see we've got just a very small margin to drive through right there. So honestly, it looks like it's doing pretty good. We haven't made this turn up here yet. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna, it actually looks like it might be pulling me off the side a little bit, I don't know. Um, so let's see. I don't know if it's gonna keep me going off to this side or if we're just gonna keep traveling around the edge. I have the offset to zero, so um, it should just keep me right on the same path. 
So there's our tree right up. This is a really dicey turn. I really am not expecting it to be able to make that because you have to be so completely accurate. And right now it's, it's just slightly off. So um, let's see what this is gonna do. So we're a little bit closer to the fruit tree than I would like, but still easily can, okay, now we're gonna go into the fence. What are they gonna do? Oh, and it, 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 it wants to drive me into the fence. <laughs> Um, and so that is actually because I didn't have the back end of this field um, plotted out. So the area that I plotted out, if you remember me saying, was from that point over there all the way to this point over here. For some reason, it doesn't want me to plot the entire loop. So I have to figure out why that is. But can it drive around the field? Yes, it can. Hands down, it it performed better than I expected. Really, it did. I forgot when I was coming up here that I didn't plot any of that out because I started my A point over there and it would not let me put my B point following through. So it's just, um, I'm gonna have to play around. I'm gonna have to play around with it a little bit more and figure out exactly what I need to do to make a full loop. And once I get that done, then I'll be able to start setting up my fields, I think. I'm glad to know that we finally did get it working. Um, still needs some adjusting, which is understandable. But um, once you get everything set up, choose a small field, a small area that you can tear up. You know, if you drive over it 100 times, not a big deal. But about an acre. I wouldn't do more than an acre or you're going to be taking forever. Um, you can even take a section of your field and just use that. Just mark it out with flags or something so you know where you're at. And uh, just keep practicing with it. And then once you get the controls down, then it should be easier to plot out your other fields. So hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully it helped you out with your installation. And um, definitely stay tuned for putting this to use. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Um, maybe I can make a playlist just for videos using this um, auto steer system. So if you have comments, put them down below. If you have questions, I will do my best to answer them. And until next time, guys, take care. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> take care, bye.